Hi and good night everyone. So welcome, my name is Anita and I have a little story for you. As my caption in this video would say, it's story time. So I know it's a very rainy evening in this country, rainy, rainy, rainy Friday. And you know, it's very scary and sad to see the situation, you know, with flooding and how people are being affected. So I really hope if you're watching this that you are safe, that you are dry, that you are okay, all right? So this message that I have, oh my goodness, I have had so much fights to record this message, all right? It's been about a week and a half, you know, something that was placed in me, you know, since the last time I did my worship Wednesday, which was last week Wednesday, and today being Friday, it's about, yeah, a week and a half, right? And, you know, after the worship Wednesday, this message just dropped in my spirit, and it took me a week and a half to finally record it, and I really need to share it, and I believe that the reason that I had so much fights is because the enemy does not, listen to me, the devil does not want you to hear this message. He doesn't. He doesn't. And it took me a little while to realize that that he doesn't want anyone to hear this message because he knows that once you know what I'm about to share with you, that it might change the situation for you and it's going to spell trouble for him, yes? All right, so I know that a lot of people would have heard the term Jesus died for our sins, all right? And um, if you are already, you know, a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you, you know, you would know this information. There are some, there is somebody out there, and I believe that this message, this message is for someone out there just to plant a seed, to plant that seed in you, that you can, you can achieve, and you can receive your salvation. You can receive the gift that is eternal life through Jesus, the gift that the devil does not want you to have. Let me tell you, the devil will fight you tooth and nail from learning the truth. He will fight you tooth and nail from learning the truth. And the Bible said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. So I'm here to share a little knowledge, but I'm going to put it in the form of a story, right? As I said, story time. So we all know, we, we've probably heard growing up, as I said, this is for the people who not on, who don't know about this topic I'm going to talk about. How does the blood of Jesus save us from sin? How does the death of Jesus save us from sin? How does the man hanging on a cross 2,000 plus years ago save us and redeem us and save us from sin? All right? So we all know what is sin, right? So how? Because a lot of people, you know, who probably just probably have a little, um, you know, a little interest and probably maybe I want to give my heart to the Lord. Maybe I want to give my heart to Jesus. I want to know a little bit more about this Jesus, but in that show. So I, I really think this is why this message was downloaded in me for you to understand, because I always believe that if you understand something, you can choose it better. Somebody telling you that eating an apple every day is going to make you healthy. You know, they're saying an apple a day keeps the doctor away. So you've heard this all your life, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. And, you know, are you going to just accept that wholesale? You may not. Some people may and some people may not. Some people who want more and want to understand more, because there are a lot of people with questioning minds, they want to understand more. So they might go and do research, and then if you research, and somebody tells you, okay, well, that apple has vitamins, and the vitamins will strengthen your immune system, make you stronger, able to fight um, diseases and infections more, that's why it will prevent you from having to go to the doctor all the time, then you'll say, okay, yeah, I understand now. You know, it, your eyes open up. You know what you're doing. So you can make an informed decision. And similarly, the the devil does, does not want you to know the information about the Lord because he knows that if you know that, you're going to make an informed choice and choose, choose Jesus. Because... You know, the devil has this way of making God out to be a big bad wolf, right? So all the years, people probably thinking that God is the God that's going to pour out judgment and he, he's angry and he hates our sin. He hates us, he hates us because we are sinners. And that's what the devil will make us feel, that because we are sinners, that he God hates us. We are no good and we are no good anymore. We just, you know, we are not good enough 
for God's love us, so God hates us. So he makes us, he puts a spin on it. You know, the enemy puts a spin on it, makes us think that God hates us. He just wants to pour our judgment. He just wants to send us all to hell. When is the actual and total opposite? God loves us so much. His love is unconditional. If we could understand what that word even means, it's, 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 it's going to blow your mind. There is no condition to God's love. He loves us despite of every single thing. And it comes like, okay, you're a parent, you have a child. Your child could do the worst of the worst of the worst. And I know we have parents out there who say they're they troublesome or whatever. There are parents out there whose children are probably involved in, in um, illegal activity and they will go to jail and you will see the mothers always defending their child. They will always love. You could do what you want. Your parents will always love you despite. Now they don't like the things that you are doing, but they love you. And this is the same thing. God loves us. So despite of the sinful nature that we acquired, right from our forefathers he still loves us so let's get into the story so i'm going to explain to you from start to finish how how jesus dying on a cross is responsible for saving us from sin and is going to set us free from sin and is going to give us the promise of eternal life that he has promised us okay so if you're thinking about if you're thinking about giving your life to jesus tonight is the night that your eyes going to open up okay see i promise you so when God created the first man and woman, Adam and Eve, okay, uh, he made them in his likeness and image, all right? So if you go back to the scriptures, we read that God made man in his likeness and image, meaning that we were without sin because God, his, he's holy, he's without sin, he's righteous, he's perfect. There, you know, he, he is totally without sin. So he made us, well, he made Adam and Eve, sorry. He made Adam and Eve completely without sin. They were perfect. They were perfect. So he made man. Why did he make man? Why does he make man? He made man just as though, same way we would want to make a, have a child, we want to make, make a child, because we want a child to love. Okay, so God wants us to be his children. He wants us to have fellowship with him, to love him, to have relationship. He created us as his children, okay? So he birthed us. So when Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, we all know the story, they were created perfect. However, God made a covenant with them at that point where, you know, they are not to, they can eat of every other fruit except the fruit of the tree, you know, of life and death. So in, in eating the fruit, that's where Eve broke the covenant with God, and we as mankind entered into sin from our first, uh, well, our first, well, I would say the first man and woman, right? That would have created the rest of us. So the covenant was broken, and sinful nature was, was sinful nature is what man became, right? So from there, from there to now, we've always been sinful. So, you know, God could have, he could have chosen to just leave us in our sin. He could have chosen to just leave us in our sin because the Bible said the wages of sin is death. So we need to understand that God is legalistic. All right, so when we understand the nature of God, he is legalistic, meaning he abides by his word, he abides by his covenant. It's just as though in a court of law or by the, the rules of a land or the laws of a land, everything is legalistic. God is legalistic and he lives by his word. He does not stray from his word. So his word is his word. He can't help it. He just can't help it. So when Adam and Eve entered into sin, because God loves us so much, and he wanted us to come back to him because the sin made us go away from him. Because he's so holy. He's so holy. He cannot accept an unholy person in his presence. All right? God is just pure holiness. And because he's so holy, if an unholy person comes near, they're just going to die. All right? So, you know, the sin of Adam and Eve broke God's heart in that he wanted his children to come back to him. So he had to make a way to do that. He had to make a way for his children to come back to him. All right. And this is where, this is where it is established that Jesus, it was, it was prophesied that a Messiah would come to save us. All right. 
So fast forward from Adam and Eve, we get into the days of Moses in the wilderness with, you know, when the, where the people were set free from Egypt and, you know, they were in the wilderness and so. So for those of you who don't know, I'm just going to inform you a little bit about that because it has bearing on the rest of the story that I'm going to tell. All right. So they, while they roamed in the wilderness, they were instructed to build a tabernacle to worship God. All right. So in the tabernacle, there was something called the Holy of Holies which is where the presence of God dwell, dwell in there. And because God, again, is so holy, nobody could have entered into the Holy of Holies except the priests. And that was only once a year, once a year, he would have had to come in and make sacrifice for atonement of sins, all right? So this is what, in those days, they had to make a lot of sacrifices, you know, uh, animal sacrifices and atonement for sin. Because as I said, God is so holy that we can't enter into this presence without an atonement for what we did, all right? So they had to do a lot of, I mean, if we could, if we had to live in those days, it would be a lot. If you go into the book of uh, um, Exodus, and those books that you know where he where they were in the wilderness, you would realize the amount of sacrifices and rituals and stuff they had to do, and every single thing had to be done by the book, by the letter, in order for it to uh, you know um, to be accepted by God, because that is that is the level of holiness God is, and it's not because He's mean, and it's not because He's He's hateful. That is just who He is. That's His very nature. He's, he's holy. So that's why he wants us to come back to him by a measure of holiness. But we can't do that because we are in sinful nature. So how is it going to happen? All right. So back then in the tabernacle, the priest would have to come once a year and make a sacrifice for the atonement of sins and go into the Holy of Holies and sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat. So the blood of the lamb would have appeased or atoned for the sin of the people, all right? So this would have been done for generations upon generations coming down the line throughout, throughout, throughout until the birth of Jesus. And this is where, this is where, oh my God, this is where God's love was proven to us. It was proven, it was shown. He allowed his only begotten son, Jesus, to come and be birthed as a man on his earth to take the place of us because inherently because of sin we we were supposed to die we were supposed to face the judgment of god and die not because god hates us but because that is the legalistic nature of god so despite of how much he loves us he would have had to destroy us because we were we had broken the covenant and we were sinful and enter God's love, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Listen to me, if we understood, you know, there's a song saying, um, I'll never know how much it costs to see my sins upon that cross. If we only knew how much it really costs. So Jesus was booted. He was the lamb of God because he was perfect. He was born, he was conceived in immaculate conception, meaning he was conceived of the Holy Spirit, not the normal way we would conceive a baby. So he was pure and this is why his death would have been able to atone atone just like how they would have sacrificed the lamb and so but he would have been the ultimate sacrifice all right so when he went on the cross God it's it, it's like he took our place and God was able to pour out his judgment upon Jesus on the cross. Can you believe that level of love? Can you even think of that level of love that he would take our place? All those beatings and weapons and bruisings, that was supposed to be for us, you know. We were supposed to receive that for our sinful nature. We were supposed to receive that punishment, but Jesus hung on that cross and he took it all. He bore the burden, he bore the pain, he bore the sins of the world upon his shoulders and he died. When that blood was shed, when that blood was shed, right, God was able to pour out the judgment upon Jesus that he would have replaced us. He would have replaced us. We were supposed to be dying in the place, you understand? So that is the depth of God's love for us. So now he has opened up a way for us to come in. 
all right, by the blood of Jesus this time, not the blood of the lamb that would have been sacrificed back in the days of Moses, but the blood of the lamb of God, which is Jesus. So now we are able, all right, he, he is now like an intercessor for us, all right? He's like, he's like a cloak that you would put on. All right, to, to, we, we, where we say it, we have the saying that when we go into the presence of God, we put on his robe of righteousness. So because of his blood making atonement for our sin, once we human beings say, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and I confess my sins and I accept him as my Lord and Savior, we are able to come back into the presence of God, into the Holy of Holies, by the blood of Jesus. Do you understand that? So, you know, a lot of people think that, why, you know, how, you know, Jesus dying on the cross could save me, you know, I'm a good person, I live good every day, I could do good deeds, I love people, I'm a nice person, and all these things are wonderful, but those are not the things that will allow you as a human to get back into the presence of God and to be saved from your sinly, sinful nature. Because that's what I'm saying, only because God's legalistic terms, his, his legalistic terms uh, state that Jesus has already paid the sacrifice, so we have to accept him now to be able to go in. That's the only way. That is the only way that we can get in. Whether we like it or not, that's the only way. And when we think about how much love, can you even think about it? Can you even think about somebody dying for you? Do you think you could die for somebody? Do you think somebody tells you, you listen, um, um, Anita, I want you to go and I want you to lie on that cross and I'm going to nail you to that cross so that you can die for somebody? I would say probably no. Because <laughs> we wouldn't want to go through that level of torture. But he did it. Jesus did it. He did it. He did it. He did it. His love, God's love, he wants us back. Do you understand what I'm saying? He wants you back and he wants me back. He wants us to come back and the devil does not want you to know this. Because as long as he can keep you blind to God's love, you're not going to want to accept it. You're going to say, um, hmm, yeah, Jesus died on a cross. Okay, yeah. I'm a good person and that's going to get me into heaven. Good being good does not get you into heaven. We cannot, in our human nature, be so good that it will get us into heaven. Never. Absolutely nothing. We can live as good as we want. We can be as perfect as we want. We can do what we want. It's not going to get us into heaven because the legal terms of heaven is that you accept Jesus because he has already shared. So guys, this is part two because I don't know what happened, but the video cut off. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, the devil does not want me to share this message. He doesn't want me to share this message. God's love is so overwhelming. He's so overwhelming. He's in love with us as children, okay? He's making a way for us to come back to him. I want you tonight to really think about how much God loves you. And to think about the sacrifice that he made for you to come back to him, okay? And I want you to really think and let the seed be planted in your heart and say, Tonight, Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for taking my place. Thank you for dying in my place. Thank you for loving me so much that you would go through that pain and torture and die in my place, Lord. That's the, a level of love. And thank you that at the end of this life, despite whatever we may face on this earth, once I accept you, I'm going to live an everlasting life with you in paradise. Because you said you were going to make a place for me. All right? So just, yes, choose ye this day whom you will serve. All right? Don't let the devil steal your salvation. Don't let him steal your salvation. The devil will make every single thing more appealing. Every single thing you could think about, he will make it more appealing for you to make you think this is what you need to do. But I'm telling you tonight, accept the Lord Jesus, not because, not because you have a fear of going to hell. That should never be the reason you accept God. Not because you have a fear of going to hell. You should accept God because you appreciate his love and how much absolutely he loves us. 
Wow, he is such a good father. He loves us. Look at what he did for us, all right? He could have left us here to die and rot in our sins, but he didn't. He didn't. He made a way. And there will be the day coming and he will destroy the devil. He will. The coming of the Lord is soon. We all know we are closer to the coming of Jesus now than we were ever, than ever before. And he's going to come. And he's going to destroy the enemy. And the devil knows that his time is limited. He knows his time is limited. And he's doing all in his power to steal away salvation of souls in this earth. But I'm telling you, this day, choose, choose, choose Jesus. Give him a try. Choose him. He's willing and he's ready. Just all you have to do is accept him. You don't need to do a ritual. You don't need to make a sacrifice. You don't need anything. All you need to do is choose with your heart and confess with your mouth. Just say, Lord, I accept you. I accept you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. So I hope that, you know, I've shed some light on how the blood of Jesus has set us free from sin. All right, we are sinful, but his covering upon our life will make us able to go back into the arms of the Father. All right, so I hope you were blessed by this message. And as I said, I'm encouraging you to accept, accept Jesus. You don't need a ritual. You don't need to be at an altar. You can do it right in your home. Nobody need, don't even need to know what's going on with you. Accept him, try him. He's the best thing that could ever happen to you. Take what I'm telling you. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this message. Have a blessed and wonderful night. And I'll be back next week Wednesday with Worship Wednesday as we sing praises to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords because he is indeed worthy of all the praise, all the honor, all the glory. Take care.